In this video of your Math 2 MVP curriculum, we are looking at Unit 6, Lesson 1. Watch out for that wave. In this lesson, we are at Family Kingdom Amusement Park in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. There is a tsunami that is approaching the park. A tsunami is a long sea wave, a long and high sea wave, that's caused by an earthquake, earthquake, ocean floor landslide, or some other underwater disturbance. As these waves approach land, they get higher and can cause devastating damage. So we're going to make some um, calculations and look at our function to kind of understand exactly how Family Kingdom Amusement Park can use this information to protect their establishment. So we have a form, uh, formula for this situation, and it is S equals the square root of 9.81D. I've already um, graphed this function for us in Desmos and created a table. One thing that is important to recognize here is that when we have an X value or a D value in this case of 9.81 and it's negative 1 for our D value, we end up with an undefined situation. And that is, of course, because we cannot take the square root of a negative number. Now, we did learn in Unit 5 that this is an imaginary number. However, since we are talking about a real-world situation, there are no imaginary answers that will exist here. So let's begin looking further into this situation by identifying the domain of the function. So our domain here, if you notice, the smallest x value that we can have is 0. So our domain would be 0 to infinity. What this is saying, in other words, is that if we're looking at d, it says that d is the depth of the water. So that means the depth of the water is greater is zero, let's see, does it say feet, meters, zero meters, or greater. Okay, that's the domain. It's got to be greater than zero meters. The range, on the other hand, is also 0 to infinity. And if we look at what the S value is standing for, it says that the S is going to be the speed of the of the wave. So the speed of the wave is zero or greater. Now notice that I did not put units here. We're going to come back and do that in a moment because our next question is going to ask us about that or and not this next question, a subsequent question. So number four asks us to describe the rate of change of the function. And how does the rate of change compare to the other rates of change of functions we've studied? So if you look at this rate of change, it is growing the whole time. Each time I move from one x, as my x's grow, so do my y values. However, what you should also notice is that they grow at a slower rate as we continue. Graphically, you can see that in the, in the steepness of the graph. As we continue to move along, it looks like it's starting to get a little flatter as it continues out. So we could describe the rate of change, of change here as it's increasing at a decreasing rate. Again, that just means that it starts out um, increasing faster 
then it finishes increasing. Thinking about that as other functions, a linear function is going to increase at a constant rate or decrease at a constant rate. A quadratic would also increase at, but it's going to increase at an increasing rate or it's going to decrease at a decreasing rate. Okay, so um, that's what makes this one a little bit different. The next question is where we're going to talk about the units for the speed. So it says in the formula, 9.8 is the acceleration due to gravity and it's measured in meters per second squared. If the depth is measured in meters, what will the unit of measure be for speed? So if you think about this, speed has to be some form, speed is always going to be some form of distance over some form of time. So that means in this case our distance is meters based on the acceleration due to gravity and our time must be seconds. So our speed is going to be measured in meters per second here. So when I come back to the previous, to number two, I can go and say zero meters per second or greater. Now the next two questions are going to ask us to make some calculations. So number six says that we can detect earthquakes when they happen under the ocean. There are monitoring stations all over the globe. An earthquake is detected at 27 degrees or 22 degrees, 27 minutes and 6 seconds north, and 54 degrees, 2 minutes and 47 seconds west. Now this particular measurement is a way of reading latitude and longitude um, on a map. It does not affect the way we solve this problem. This is off the coast of South Carolina. The ocean at that point has a depth of 5,150 meters. So how fast would we expect the wave to be traveling? So let's think about this in terms of the fact that our equation is again the square root of 9.81 d. So in this case we know d. We know that the depth of the water is 5,150 meters. So to solve this we're going to plug d into the place or plug 5150 into the place of d. Typing this into our calculator, we will find that the speed of the wave was 224.77 meters per second. So 224.77 meters per second. So when we use this equation, we just use the general representation of the problem to solve. Now, number seven says if a wave is detected traveling at 185 meters per second, how deep was the epicenter that created it? So here we have a couple of options. One thing we can do is we recognize that our speed here is 185 meters per second. So we can, to solve this, simply plug in 185 for S and then solve this using um, some of the methods that we learned in Unit 5. The first being that we are going to get rid of the square root by squaring. So when we square 185, we're going to end up with 3,000 or 34,225 equals 9.81d. Our next step would be to divide by that 9.81 and when we divide that by 9.81 we're going to get 3,488.79 meters would be our depth. So if we have a speed of 185 meters per second, we should have a depth of 3,488.79 meters. Now, to think about this problem, go back and look at your previous answer where you had a depth of 5,000 plus meters and your speed was 224. So it makes sense that this speed would be a little bit less because the depth was a little bit less. Okay. Um, another way that we could have solved that was to look at our original function 
and solved for d by squaring the function originally, which would have given us s squared equals the 9.81d. Then we could have divided, just like we did, by the 9.81. So rather than um, solving when we had numbers in, we would just have plugged in our value for s and gone straight to solving the function. That sums up your lesson one from unit six.